Yo what's going on guys Tanmay for simple snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial on network security and the topic for today's video as the title of the video suggests is data encryption standard that is DES algorithm so this is one of the most important video and topic in network security and if you are a IT or computer science student i'm pretty sure you'll have this entire topic in detail in your syllabus that is the DES algorithm and the reason why des algorithm is so famous and widely studied is because it was first developed in 1970s and this algorithm is actually a real time algorithm which was used in real applications because it provided high level of security during the 1970s and we'll be studying the entire process of encryption and how it works we'll also see the different variations of des and we'll see a lot of theory about its strengths and how it works and everything that you need to know about des is going to be in this one entire video so make sure you watch this video till the end and at the end we'll also discuss the variations as i mentioned that is the types of des that is double des and triple des and what not so everything is going to be covered in this one single video and i'm going to try to make it as easy as possible with the help of diagrams and with the help of proper steps so if you are preparing your answers th this theory will also help you i'm pretty sure so you can make a note of the theory as well as the diagrams if you need and with that being said let's start off with a little bit of theory first we'll just read about des and we'll see the entire overview that is all the steps in the bird's eye view that you can see in, on the right hand side and then we'll also see in detail each and every step and what happens at every step so starting off with the data encryption standard algorithm as i mentioned the des algorithm was developed in 1970s by the national bureau of standards with the help of national security agency also known as nsa and it's an american agency if you want to know a little bit more about the history i can drop some links in the video description i'm not going to get into a lot of history because there's a lot of information about this algorithm so des is a block cipher so we've already seen what is a block cipher what is stream cipher and in the previous videos of this entire network security playlist we've been going through small small algorithms we've been going through the different algorithm modes algorithm types so all of those are going to be necessary to understand this so those were the basics but this is sort of like one big algorithm which is very important to understand especially from a student point of view if you have this subject this is a very important topic so moving forward it encrypts data block sizes of 64 bits okay so the block size is of 64 bits from the diagram you can see the plain text 64 bits and the resulting cipher text is also 64 bits so moving ahead same algorithm and key are used for encryption as well as decryption which means that this is a symmetric key algorithm so remember symmetric versus asymmetric right in symmetric we were using single key in asymmetric we had two different keys now the key length is 56 bits so basically the key originally consist of 64 bits however only 56 of them are actually used by the algorithm and other eight are solely used for parity and error checking and and what not so okay so they are not directly used in the algorithm so remember this number that is 56 bit key length 64 bit cipher text as well as plain text these numbers are important and we'll see them in for the processes also so there consist of 16 steps each of which is called as a round so this point is talking about this step number 2 okay so this step number 2 is known as 16 rounds because the individual processes that is the step number 2 consist of some sub steps or sub activities that is step 2.1 2.2 2.3 2.4 and 2.5 so all these five inner steps are performed 16 times okay so they are iterated 16 times that's why known as 16 rounds so each round performs steps of substitution as well as transposition now if you've been watching this playlist we've seen some substitution ciphers and we've seen some transposition ciphers as well right so for example substitution cipher would be Caesar cipher or modified Caesar cipher and transposition would be real fence cipher. So I hope you know the difference between substitution and transposition. But in DES what happens is both of these methods or concepts are used and this adds to the strength of this entire encryption process. So these two points are important that is it is based on two fundamental attributes that is substitution also known as confusion and transposition also known as diffusion. So if you are writing a theory answer in your exams make sure you mention these two points these two points are very important so substitution is when you replace a character by some other character okay so a is replaced by x b is replaced by y c is replaced by z so this is substitution so what is transposition 
well transposition is juggling of these bit positions so if a b c is the plain text b c a would be the cipher text and this is me just interchanging the positions right so all the positions are being swapped so this is known as transposition so remember this because this is going to be needed in further processes okay so this was just a general overview about the data encryption standard now what we'll do is we'll go step by step individually and completely follow this entire process starting from step number 1 to step number 2 and then we'll visit the inner steps that is step 2.1 2.2 2.3 and then we'll see step 3 and ultimately we'll reach the cipher text so if i go in this order that's the best way you'll understand the entire process what is exactly happening and with that being said let's start off with the step number 1 that is initial permutation okay so step number 1 initial permutation so as you can see in the diagram also we are at step number 1 this is initial permutation so what exactly is initial permutation so i'm just going to read the points and things will be very clear because i have made those points in such a way that it is very easy to understand and then i'll also diagrammatically explain what exactly is happening so initial permutation that is ip happens only once before the first round so before the step number 2 which had those internal steps start this initial permutation happens once so what we do is we take the 64 bit block and we perform jugglery of bit positions of the original plain text block so essentially what is permutation is nothing but we are performing transposition okay so whenever permutation comes into picture it essentially means we are performing transposition that is jugglery of bits which essentially means interchanging the positions so it suggests how the transposition in ip should proceed so basically there is some criteria wherein we have already predetermined which bit position is being transposed to what position so for example the ip is replaces the first bit of the original plain text with the 50th bit of the original plain text and so on and so forth so this criteria is already provided in the algorithm and after ip is done the resulting 64 bit permuted block is divided into 32 bit blocks so what happens is once this process is done the 64 bit block is divided into two blocks one is known as lpt and other one is known as rpt and bo both of them are 32 bits so 32 bit blocks so initially it is 64 bit plain text right so it is divided into 32 bits after initial permutation and lpt means left plain text rpt means right plain text so remember this in mind and after ip is done then the 16 rounds are performed that is the step number 2 begins so this diagram actually shows how the permutation happens just to demonstrate and this is not the actual thing that is happening this is just for demonstration purpose that you can see that input block so this input block is the plain text which is supplied to the initial permutation function wherein you can see the bit positions are swapped right so one is shifted to 6th two is shifted to 3 3 is shifted to 1 and so on and so forth till 64 bits so the output that we get is then divided into lpt and rpt so this is step number 1 okay so let's move on to step number 2 okay so in step number 2 we have multiple sub steps right you can see in step number 2 we have 2.1 2.2 2.3 2.4 and 2.5 and these five steps are performed 16 times so what i'm going to explain is one single round and then of course everything is going to be repeated again right so no point in explaining 15 times what is happening because every time it is the same thing that is happening so i'm just going to explain you one round and then you'll understand exactly what is the process that is happening in these 16 rounds that is in complete step number 2 so starting off with step number 2.1 we start off with key transformation so after initial permutation what we have is we have we have lpt and we have rpt right so we have lpt and we have rpt and each of them is 32 bits now for each round a 56 bit key is available so remember our key was 56 bit right so from this key a different 48 bit sub key is generated during each round using a process called key transformation so what is going to happen is we are going to perform this 16 times right so there are 16 rounds so for every round we are going to generate a new key which is going to be of 48 bits from this 56 bit original key so this is the crux where every time a new key is being used in the 16 rounds so the 56 bit key is first divided into two halves of 28 bits so if this is the key of 56 bit it is first divided into 28 bit and 28 bit and then these halves are circularly shifted left by one or two positions depending upon what round it is okay so 
it is shifted in a circular fashion so the bits are shifted okay so by shifting i mean if we have four different positions and if the bits are 1 0 1 0 when you perform a left shift the position would be shifted one towards the left so it would be 1 0 1 0 so this position would be taken by this number over here which goes out to the left okay so we'll have 0 1 0 1 so this is something that is happening in the shifting function and after an appropriate shift 48 of the 56 bits are selected so the key transformation process involves permutation that is transposition you can see transposition is happening changing of position of bits so we have permutation as well as selection of a 48 bit subset right so from the 56 bit we are selecting only 48 bits so it is also known as compression permutation so since 56 bits are there and we are getting only 48 bits it is known as compression and we are performing transposition that is why it is also known as permutation so combined it is known as compression permutation so this is step number 2.1 key transformation and it is done because we want to have unique key for every round okay and we want a 48 bit unique key for every round so that's why compression permutation is performed so let's see step number 2.2 okay so now we have a 48 bit key from step number 2.1 right and the step number 2.2 is expansion permutation so during expansion permutation the rpt is expanded from 32 bits to 48 bits now remember after initial permutation we had lpt and we had rpt right so we had lpt and we had rpt so what this step is saying is during expansion permutation the rpt is expanded from 32 bits to 48 bits so we are taking this rpt and we are applying some expansion permutation function which makes 32 bits expand to 48 bits so how does this happen so there are two steps that make this 32 bit rpt into 48 bit rpt and we'll see that in a minute so the two steps are the 32 bit rpt is divided into eight blocks each consisting of four bits so we take the original rpt we are taking this rpt and we are dividing it into eight blocks so this is block number 1 block number 2 dot 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 and block number 8 so we have divided into eight blocks of four bits now each 4 bit block is then expanded to a corresponding 6 bit block that is we have 4 bits of the original block and then two more bits are added and they are actually the repeated first and fourth bit of the 4 bit block okay so this might sound confusing but let's see what is happening so we have divided the original plain text which is of 32 bits into 4 bit blocks right so this is input block which is of 4 bit this is input block 2 which is again of 4 bits and this is input block 8 so in between we have 3 4 5 6 7 and this one is 8 so each of them are 4 bits so to expand it to 6 bits what we are doing is we are first taking 1 2 3 and 4 as it is as the output block and for the first and sixth bit of output block 1 we are taking the adjacent part so you can see the first bit of input block 2 is attached to the sixth bit of the output block 1 similarly the fourth bit of input block 1 is attached as first bit of output block 2 the first bit of output block 1 comes from the last bit of input block 8 so now you can see a pattern over here that is the adjacent bits are being attached for the output block to become 6 bit blocks so once all the output blocks become 6 bit blocks we have we have 8 blocks so 8 into 6 will give us 48 bit rpt right so from step number 2.1 we have 48 bit key from step number 2.2 that is expansion permutation now we have a 48 bit rpt so what happens now so let's see what happens in the next step so from the key transformation step that is step number 2.1 we have a 48 bit key right we have 48 bit key we performed compression permutation to get that 48 bit key for the first round and from the expansion permutation step that is this 2.2 we have expanded the rpt from 32 bits to 48 bits so we have 48 bit rpt so now in the expansion permutation that is before moving to the s box substitution we are going to perform an xor operation between these two 48 bit key and 48 bit rpt and then provide this output to the s box substitution okay so before moving to 2.3 we are performing an xor operation between the 48 bit key and the 48 bit rpt so i hope up until now everything is clear and we are moving step by step so if you are stuck or if you get confused you can go back in this video to see what happened in the previous step so now let's move on to step number 2.3 that is s box substitution 
So I hope expansion permutation was clear. Okay, so step number 2.3 is S box substitution. So it is a process that accepts 48 bit input from the XOR operation involved in the compressed key and expanded RPT. So in the previous step that is 2.2, we saw that there was an XOR operation between the 48 bit key and the 48 bit RPT, right? So that output is taken as an input in the S box. And what happens is this 48 bit input that is taken in the 2.3 step that is S box substitution is converted into a 32 bit output using substitution technique. Okay. Now this substitution is performed by eight substitution boxes called as S boxes. Each of the eight S boxes has a six bit input and it provides a four bit output. So again, the 48 bit input block is divided into eight sub blocks. So you can see the 48 bit input block, which is coming from step 2.2 for 2.3 is divided into six bit sub blocks and each of the sub block is provided to S box. So this S box is nothing but a function which makes the six bit input a four bit output and it performs substitution inside the process, which is obviously not known directly to us because then the hackers can easily crack the code. So the 48 bit input block is divided into eight sub blocks and each such block is given to a single S box. The output of all S boxes are then combined to form 32 bit block, which is given to the next stage of a round, which is P box permutation. So I hope this step number 2.3 that is S box substitution is very clear. Basically what we're doing is we're taking the 48 bit output, which was coming from the expansion permutation and we are converting it to a 32 bit output using S box substitution using this diagram, which you can see we are taking six bits and we are converting it to four bits, which finally combines to 32 bit output block. Okay. So if you want, you can pause the video and take a note of these points if you are preparing a theoretical answer. So this is S box substitution and let's move on to the P box permutation now. Now the output of S box consists of 32 bits, right? So from S box, we are getting a 32 bit output of the RPT. So note that up until now, whatever operations we are performing, we've performed only on the RPT, right? That is the right plain text. The LPT is untouched. So we'll come to that in a minute. So output of S box consists of 32 bits and these are permitted using a P box and permutation means transposition, right? So this involves simple permutation that is swapping of each bit with another bit without any expansion or compression. So this is called basic P, P box permutation. So again, the input block is 32 bit. We are just interchanging the positions and then we are getting an output block and this is it. So this is very basic P box permutation. Okay. So the input block is 32 bit. The output is also 32 bit, but then the bit positions are swapped here and there, and there is a predefined set of swapping instructions of which bit is supposed to be swapped with which position. Okay. So this is 2.4 that is P box permutation. So let's move on to the last step of the rounds that is 2.5, which is XOR and swap. Okay. So all these operations are performed only on the 32 bit right half portion of the 64 bit original plain text that is on the RPT. So remember after initial permutation, we had LPT and RPT, right? Now when the rounds start leaving the step 2.1, because it involves only key transformation, all these three steps we've been performing only on the RPT. So the RPT was expanded here. RPT was passed to perform S box substitution and the RPT was permitted again. And we had not touched LPT up until now. So this is what the points are saying. The left half portion LPT was untouched and the LPT is now XORed with the output produced by the P box permutation. So this is another diagram, which is saying that we had initial permutation. And after that, we divided it into 32 bit LPT and 32 bit RPT. And then the 32 bit RPT went through 2.1, 2.2, 2.3 and 2.4. But the LPT was untouched, right? You can see that LPT is not touched up until now. So in the XOR and swap stage, that is step number 2.5, we are taking the left plain text LPT and we are performing an XOR operation with the output from the P box permutation. That is with the output from this step. So whatever output we are getting from P box permutation, we are performing an XOR operation with the LPT. Now, after this XOR operation, the output of the XOR operation is the new right plain text. So you can see a yellow, yellow line. This is the new right plain text and for the new left plain text, we are taking the original right plain text, which we got after initial permutation. So this is that swapping happening over here. So that's why the name of the step is XOR that is XOR operation and swap. 
So after this XOR and swap is ha happened, you can see that in this pink box, we are getting a new left plane text, which is originally the right plane text of the previous round. And we are getting a new 32 bit right plane text. So this new LPT and new RPT is now transferred to the next round. So up until now, what we just described is one single round, right? But there are 16 rounds. So for 16 rounds, we need 16 LPT and RPTs. So this is where the new LPT and RPT is supplied again. And then again, these steps are performed over and over again for 16 times. And after the rounds, only then we proceed to the step number three. So I hope the 16 rounds, that is the entire step number two is now clear. That is the intermediate sub steps that we've seen. So now let's move on to step number three. Okay, so after the step number two is over, that is after the 16 rounds are over, at the end of the 16 rounds, the final permutation is performed only once. So after the 16 rounds, that is step number two, we are getting a 64 bit output from this dotted box. Okay, so we have the LPT and we have the RPT, which is going to be 32 bits each, right? This is going to be 32 and this is going to be 32. And combined, we are getting 64 bit output, which is supplied to the final permutation. So in the final permutation, again, we are performing a simple transposition, which is again swapping of bits, wherein we have 64 bit input. So from the XOR and swap stage of the last 16th round, we are getting a 64 bit output. So the input block for the final permutation is going to be 64 bits. And then after performing a swapping, that is transposition or, or interchanging of bit positions, we are going to get another output block of 64 bits. So after performing this final permutation, only then are we going to get the cipher text. So this output that we are getting from the final permutation is our actual cipher text. And this is the end of the entire DES encryption process. So yeah, this was the entire encryption process of DES algorithm. Let's see a little bit more about DES. So talking about the decryption of DES, now the same algorithm used for encryption also works for decryption because it is a symmetric algorithm, right? So the algorithm is reversible. So the only difference between encryption and decryption process is the reversal of key portions. So remember for the rounds, we need 16 different keys, right? So if we have keys as K1, K2, K3 till K16 for the 16 encryption rounds, then for decryption, the key should be just reversed. That is 16, 15, 14 and K1, right? Only this step is required to perform the decryption. Rest all the steps in reverse order would provide proper decryption process, okay? So that's why I'm not going to get into entire decryption process because that can be a totally separate video. But then since it is a reversible process and it is a symmetric algorithm, if you just reverse the order of the keys, then the proper decryption can be possible. Talking about the strength of DS, now the inner working of DS algorithm are known to the general public, right? We know all the steps, right? So therefore the strength of the DS lies in its key, which must be secret. Also, since DS uses 56 bit key, it means that we have this many number of possible keys. Now I'm not even going to read this number because I don't even know how many digits are there, but these are the number of possible keys, which means that a brute force attack on DS is impractical, right? So there are so many possibilities that even if you try to implement all the different possibilities, it will take years to actually reach the output or it will take years to actually crack the key. Now, in order to make DES even more stronger, we have two major variations of DES. So we have double DES and triple DES. And as the name suggests, double DES means performing DES two times with two different keys. And then for triple DES, we perform DES three times and there are two different variations. So let's just quickly see double DES and triple DES. So in double DES, as the name suggests, it means we have to perform DES twice. So it does twice what DES normally does once. And in double DES, we are using two different keys K1 and K2. So K1 is 56 bit and K2 is 56 bit, which will enhance the encryption because then it will make it two times stronger, right? So it performs DES on original plain text using K1 to get encrypted text. So we have original plain text over here. We perform encryption once using K1 to get the intermediate cipher text. And then we perform encryption again using K2 to get the final cipher text. And both the time we are using DES algorithm. Okay. So this makes the entire process two times stronger. Now let's see what is triple DES and its two different types. So triple DES has two types. So the first type is triple DES with three keys. So idea of triple DES is performing DES three times using three different keys. So from the diagram itself, it's very easy and understandable. You're taking the original plain text. 
you're performing des one time using k1 that is key one you get the cipher text you take the cipher text and encrypt it again perform des again using k2 you get a new cipher text then you encrypt it using k3 and you perform des again third time to get the final cipher text so this is the final cipher text and then decryption would be again in the reverse order you have to perform des three different times using the sub keys in a reverse order right so this adds or makes the strength of the des three times stronger so one last combination of triple des is triple des with two keys so this is a little different you take the original plain text you perform encryption with key k1 and you get cipher text 1 okay now you perform decryption instead of encryption using key k2 so now you can see we are using different key right so if we had this cipher text 1 and if we use k1 again to perform decryption then we'll get the original text back but we are using k2 so k2 is not equal to k1 right so if you try to perform decryption using k2 we are going to get some another random text which is going to act as a cipher text 2 okay and now if you perform encryption again on this cipher text 2 using the previous key that is key k1 we are going to get another cipher text which is going to act as a final cipher text okay and this encryption and decryption is again des process so here the only difference is in between we are performing decryption and not encryption three times so this is also called encrypt decrypt encrypt mode which makes it more random and more complicated and here we are using only two keys you can see we are using k1 once we are using k2 to decrypt and then we are using k1 again to encrypt so triple des with two keys so yeah this was the different variations of des algorithm and that's it for this video guys i hope you understood the entire process of des i know it's a lengthy process but if you've made it till now if you've watched this video till the end and if you've understood it please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments that you like this video hope you have a very good idea about the entire process of des encryption what is the strength of des what are the different attributes of des and also the different variations and types of des so that's it for this video guys if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel make sure you subscribe so that you get notified whenever i upload a new video and thanks for watching guys i'll see you guys in the next video peace